The ancient Egyptians believed that on the gateway to heaven, you're only ever asked two questions. And the first question is, have you found joy in your life? And the second question is, has your life brought joy to others? And I think in that simple set of questions, you have the core and the heart and the essence of well-being in your life. Have you found your joy? And has your life been a source of joy to others? And this evening is about the business of well-being. And little like Mick, some of you here, I enjoy playing with words as well. And I think there's some ambiguity in that, the business of well-being. Because it seems to have some dimensions to it. The business of well-being. The well-being of a business. And also, the well-being business that many of you are in here. And I think something that unites all of those three dimensions of that statement for this evening is energy work. And I loved your metaphor of twilight time, of taking the time to go inside and listen to what's going on for you. And I wonder how many of us tune in to energy. You talked about, where's our, our Jacob, about feelings, tuning into your feelings around particular <coughs> things. And one of my things, I'm, I'm in my wisdom years now, you know. <coughs> and in my wisdom years, what I've found is that my energy comes when I am in alignment with my values. When I don't just talk about values, but I live them when I'm in alignment with my vision for my one wild and precious life. And I think many of those things bring to an individual well-being, a sense of wellness. Bert Hellinger, a very famous German psychologist, said that the cause of all illness is ungiven gifts. It's a very bold statement, isn't it? And certainly as a psychologist, I believe that the cause of all mental illness is ungiven gifts. It's people out of alignment, alignment with their energy system, with the flow of the life force through them. It's being out of touch with their potential and being out of touch with their power. Just another word for energy. And I brought a wee gadget with me tonight. A couple of you have seen this before. It's not from a sex shop, I assure you. <laughs> Can you hear it? Is it picking it up on the mic? Yeah. yeah. And it's a gadget that detects energy in the human system. Fascinating little thing. And as Finn said, I've been lucky enough to have some great students from this room. I talk about the Yeeha scale. If we were to place it upon you, what kind of reading from your energy system would we get? <laughs> it's a fascinating thing, the human body, and how it responds to energy, how it responds <coughs> to particular things in life, and how well it's being as it's doing all of those things. I have such a tough job, you know. Occasionally I get to do that sports psychology with rugby players and uh, football players and so on. And without question, the inner game affects the outer game. And just as a quick demonstration of that, I wonder if I can borrow someone from the audience. How way up here, as we say up north? <laughs> Is it okay to put this down? If you would just make a, a fist for me. Cool. And I want you to be strong as I attempt to push your arm down. And there is no way you're going to let a wench like me push that arm down. So, there you go. I feel your strength and you feel mine. Okay. Cool. And then I want you to have a strong moment again as you talk in a deep and meaningful way to the back wall there, out loud. And as you're being strong, I want you to say continuously, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> 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 and push 
just about as hard as I did before. But let's just test that again, because that could have been a distraction technique, couldn't it? <coughs> so be strong and speak in a deep and meaningful way to the wall at the back of the room and say the Obama mantra, I can, I can, I can, I can. I can, I can, I can, I can. <laughs> you know, a thought that is in your mind takes one hundredth of one second to be inside of your body, affecting complex muscle tissue in an instant, just like that. It's inside of your body as a neuropeptide chain of chemicals. But you know, the muscle that keeps the electrical system of your body going is this one. So how does your internal world and the thought processes that go on within it impact <coughs> your well-being? on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and the accumulation of that internal dialogue, the thoughts that we think, the beliefs that we hold. Beliefs, if you think about that word, belief, B-E-L-I-E-F, there's a lie at the heart of a belief. So make them work for you, not against you. Run the I can Obama kind of internal dialogue, especially you <coughs> young ones learning this. I was an old woman before I learned all of this stuff, you know. In your mind, you have neurons that help you to think and make connections. But you know, the second biggest collection of neurons is inside of your gut. An endocrinologist called this your second brain. So when we talk about listening to the energy, <laughs> it's an interesting thing. And the third biggest collection of neurons is in your heart. So your whole body, when we think of our mind, we think it's in here. But well-being <coughs> can be in the mind and it impacts the body. Because your body has ears, if you like, more than on the side of your head. It eavesdrops on your internal world. And it gets a feeling from that. And literally, you can depress your immune system by up to 40%, 40% with the thoughts that you think. When we do uh, saliva tests on people and test for the various anti-cancer T cells and so on, you will tend to see a very huge reduction when you have people thinking a negative dialogue when you take that test again. And yet a positive I can thought, just as it strengthens the muscles of the body, the heart, also strengthens the immune system by up to 40%. Much of your well-being is a choice you make. Well-being is a choice that you make each and every day. To what extent can you make well-being a priority? And given that not only are we energy systems, but the families that we come from and live within our energy systems too. And how does your mental state, which affects the energy that you give out, which impacts others? Have any of you been in hospital here? Have you had a relative in hospital? <coughs> Beware depressed nurses. Harvard research shows that when nurses are depressed, the death rate in places like cardiac care units is four times higher. And it isn't that the nurses are doing murder upon those wards. <laughs> it's that we can infect and affect people from outside of their bodies. And that literally the warm, comforting presence of someone can lower the secretion of fatty acids, can release serotonin in the body of another person. And so your well-being is not just a gift for yourself, but it is a gift to others and to this world. And with that thought, I'm going to leave you. One wild and precious life. Follow the energy that you have. Find the joy in your life. And I think business success is about finding your own joy, taking action in that direction. It's inviting you forward. And taking that as a gift into this world. Thank you. Thank you.